The phenomenon, Lionel Messi's legacy of greatness. Lionel Messi still has same desire to win he had at Barcelona as Tata Martino insists Inter Miami superstar's impact on him, LS, hasn't surprised him. Lionel Messi, Inter Miami CF, Major League Soccer, Barcelona, La Liga. Inter Miami boss Gerardo Martino isn't surprised by Lionel Messi's impact on him, LS, and says his desire to win is as strong as it was at Barcelona. Saturday will be the last time Lionel Messi wears the shirt of Paris Saint-Germain. It was expected and reported, but on Thursday, official confirmation came from the French club's coach, Christophe Galtier. I have had the privilege of managing the best player in the history of football, Galtier said. Saturday, against Clermont is his last game at the Parc des Princes. I hope he will be received in the best possible way. Lionel Messi to join MLS side Inter Miami after PSG exit despite Barcelona, Saudi Arabia interest. Lionel Messi apologizes to Barcelona fans after choosing Inter Miami. Barca respect decision to choose league with fewer demands. How signing Lionel Messi will impact Inter Miami, MLS and American soccer? There is no guarantee of that. The denouement of the two-year Messi era in France's capital city has been characterized by unhappiness from all parties, the player, the club and, audibly, the supporters too, when he first emerged at Leberget Airport in August 2021, smiling in a white t-shirt with ICI set Paris this is Paris on it, you would have predicted such a regretful conclusion. Messi was a player who rarely made headlines outside of his era-defining talent. But then he swapped Barcelona for Paris and found himself caught up and partaking in a soap opera to rival any that has taken place in these parts. His unauthorized trip to Saudi Arabia last month closed the door on his future at PSG, amid debate about whether or not he would extend his contract by a further year, the fact he has chosen not to resign. And that PSG were so willing and comfortable with the idea of letting go of arguably the greatest footballer ever would surely indicate that the Messi project in Paris has not been successful. But it is not quite as simple as that. Sure, he will leave with some whistles ringing in his ears, but he also departs with another for winner's medals around his neck. Not just any medals either. There have been two more league titles with PSG, but also the crown he coveted most, the World Cup, from the get-go. Messi to PSG felt like a transfer of convenience. All parties involved stood to gain something from the agreement. Barcelona could not afford to keep him, but PSG could offer good money and Champions League football. PSG would also gain not only from his talent, but what he'd bring off the field. Marketing, merchandise, and glamour, the club have claimed that the transfer has paid for itself. And then, of course, the club's ownership. Qatar Sports Investments, the subsidiary of Qatar's state wealth fund, would benefit to, by virtue of success at the Qatar-hosted World Cup last November and December. As a transaction, then, this deal paid dividends. PSG's social media following skyrocketed. PSG's main Twitter account jumped by 800,000 followers in a month after Messi signed and has continued to rise. It now has 5 million more followers than in July 2021, the month before he arrived. The club's TikTok account now has 40 million followers, and that's without referencing the addition of Messi's 466 million Instagram followers off the pitch. We are growing everywhere. Club president Nasser Al-Khalafi told staff in a speech this year. The club's owners, in particular, were able to provide Messi with an ideal platform to prepare for what would surely, at 35 years of age, be his final attempt to win a World Cup, and ultimately to make history and complete one of the game's greatest career arcs. They would be the employers of the two star protagonists, Messi and France striker Kylie Mbappé in one of the greatest World Cup finals ever. PSG's 2020-23 season may have been impacted severely, but it was a transfer that facilitated an excellent World Cup. For Messi, the fact he went on to complete his trophy haul underlines that this period will be remembered as a success for him.
Even though everything was not perfect, yet those are not barometers that directly link to PSG, the football team. And it's here where the debate arises. This was not the Messi of his Barcelona prime. It never could be. His first season in Paris was difficult. He had not moved clubs before, having joined Barcelona at age 13, and it brought a host of new challenges, both on the field in terms of adapting to a new coach and teammates, and off it, by moving his family into a new environment. It told on the pitch, with his 11 goals and 15 assists from 34 games across all competitions. Those are not bad numbers, but they are not messy at peak potential numbers. But in a sporting sense at PSG, success is measured by how they do in the Champions League. And in the Champions League, PSG failed. In both of Messi's seasons, they were eliminated in the round of 16, despite their huge investment in a stunning front three. Also including Brazilian star Neymar, PSG could not get that combination to fire them to victory. So, a failure then, well, of course, those failures in the Champions League were not all Messi's doing. This season's flood centered around poor squad building. The club did not recruit well enough last summer. They were exposed defensively and lacked a focal point or a clear number nine when the Champions League's crucial period came around in February and March. Injuries struck, and the team were ill-equipped for their tie with Bayern Munich. If anything, Messi's goals and assists helped the team to retain the League One title. He built a strong relationship with Bap, for whom he has so far provided 11 assists this season. While there were notable individual displays too, such as against Lens and Marseille in the league. Indicative of his influence is that PSG will have a big, big hole when he departs in terms of creativity, replacing that number of goal involvements. 41 goals and assists from 40 games in all competitions this season will be tough. Yet to say everything was great with Messi in the team, despite all that influence, would be disingenuous. He was also part of how this season unraveled for PSG. They have lost nine games in all competitions already this calendar year, having only been beaten four times in 2022. Their post-World Cup slump was dramatic, and Messi was no exception. He scored seven goals and provided 10 assists in the 13 league games he played this season before the tournament, then got nine goals and six assists in the 18 he's played after it. Messi was also a factor in the squad building problem. Tactically, he was not a comfortable fit in a team with too many stars, even if this season ends with PSG retaining the title. Messi has never been known for his off-the-ball work, but when you factor in three talents who are similar with Bap and Neymar, all of whom are at their best when the play is centered around them and none of whom are natural number nine stuff either, you will have set up problems. It felt revealing that PSG's most dominant display of the second half of the season away to Troyes last month, where they had an expected goals XG number of 4.1, their second highest figure for that metric of the whole campaign. In a 3-1 win, came without the suspended Messi. He has not had a lot of time, but there was not very much for the fans to get behind. He was a star performer in the run-up to the World Cup when PSG went 22 matches unbeaten to start the season. But after the tournament, as they sank, it left fans with the impression that Argentina's campaign in Qatar was all that mattered. A dip after the greatest triumph of your career, which leaves you with nothing more to pursue individually, is pretty understandable. But for PSG supporters, even with an important goal return, criticism was inevitable, particularly amid speculation that he would leave in the summer, which was hardly enamoring. And like with Barcelona, there was no social capital for Messi to fall back on and ultimately no social capital was built with PSG fans. It was a transactional transfer from the start and it became very difficult to escape that feeling over the past two years. By the end, with Messi selling the wares of Saudi tourism and opting for a Coldplay concert in Barcelona instead of attending the French Player of the Year awards, any emotional connection seemed non-existent. There would be no repeat of the affection Messi felt in the Catalan Giants camp new at the Parc des Princes. And in recent weeks, 
the heckles against him vocalized that. PSG supporters were never able to enjoy his talent in the way their counterparts did at Barcelona. Like their 2020-23 season as a whole, the bond felt soulless and Barcelona was where they assumed he would rather be. As the team's form wobbled in the wake of the World Cup, Messi had no emotional link to fall back on. The World Cup was important to him, of course, but that mattered little in the stands in Paris. The team's form declined, and so did the goodwill. Messi was a symptom of PSG's misdirection, pursuing stars over a workable project. This is something the club appear eager to change by building their future around BAP. And the fact they are doing so indicates the previous approach has not been completely successful. The unhappiness of recent weeks means Messi's two-season spell in Paris ends under a bit of a cloud, but those involved in the deal are unlikely to say it was a failure. Indeed. When you look back over his time there and factor in what the parties involved ultimately wanted out of this transfer, it is evident they secured much of what they set out to achieve. For PSG fans, however, the terms of that success were not necessarily what they signed up to. On the pitch anyway, as a business transaction, this deal worked. As a football transfer for PSG, though, it is hard to make the same case.